Welcome back to Keep On Creating. I'm Mike, this is my t-shirt printers. Let's create something. So if you're new here or you haven't already, make sure to hit that subscribe button, ding the bell so you know when a new video freshly lands. Then go give this video a thumbs up, it really helps grow the channel and keep these videos coming. Today we're going to be tackling half tones in Affinity Designer. It's probably one of the most requested videos I've had since the Illustrator half tone effect tutorial. We want half tones! Hey, you out of line! Which I'll leave a link up here. Now because there's no real blend tool or transform tool in Affinity Designer as yet, we have to create a little bit of a hack or a work around this. But what I've got ahead and done is create a few different versions of these halftone dots. So I've got some with the big dots, small to small dots, just the variations of them, and some circular ones. I've left a link in the description below if you want to go check them out. Now when I stepped into this tutorial, I actually went ahead and did it on an A3 size page, which is about 420 millimeters wide. I recommend you do this on an A4 or a US size, just because it's going to be a lot smaller and easier to deal with because Omar when you push that add button function ugh, you'll see what I mean when you push that button and how long it takes to actually cause them to join. It does make sense though because you're trying to join like a gabazillion dots together. Right let's just jump right in. Let's start by opening up a new page so I'm going to go up here to Affinity Designer and go across to file drop down to new and we're going to open up this new document so I'm going to go for an A3 size page here and I want this to be a horizontal or landscape as it's indicating over here. So I'm just gonna click on that and I'm gonna go create. Let's start by drawing a horizontal line at the top of our page this time. So I'm gonna hit, hit P and get my pen tool up, which is this tool over here. I'm gonna draw a line going along the top of this page. So I'm just gonna click over here. I'm gonna hold shift so I get a nice straight line and I'm gonna click all the way on this side of the page over here. I'm gonna hold down Alt and just select anywhere on the page just to deselect this line and I'm going to push V to get our move tool up again, which is this tool over here. And I'm going to reselect our line. I know it's a bit of a process, but that's the way it is. So with our line selected, just make sure we all got the same settings over here on the swatches. I want this to not have a fill and I want our stroke to have a black line at the moment. You can choose any color you want, but black is going to be the best one so we can see what we're doing. If we just head on up here to our stroke palette, you can see this is our solid line style. And if you just go to the right of that, that's a dashed line style. So if I just click that, you can see it gives us these options at the bottom over here. So this is but your basically your dot and this is your dash. So it goes dot, dash, dot, dash. And to see what we're doing, I'm just gonna put our width up to a one point. And now you can see it's given us this, like this little ant trail going all the way along here. So your dash size, I'm just gonna really zoom in here. I'm just gonna really zoom in so you can see. Okay, cool. And now I'm with your line still selected by this dash over here, I'm gonna say zero. And you can see it gives us that really cool, perfect circle dot. And this little one over here is your dash. So let's set that at about five. And you can see it's given us that good gap. Now what we're going to do with this line, because it is a line and you can see that line still going through the center of it, we've got to expand this line. So we're going to go layer and we're going to go expand stroke. And you can see it's given us that boundary line over there on either side. Now you can see with this one over here, it's actually given us half a circle. We don't want half a circle. So I'm going to hit A to get my node tool up. So this is your node tool over here. And I'm just going to click and drag over those little points over there and delete them. And then I'm gonna go back to my move tool, which is this tool up here, or V. Now let's add in some guides. So to make sure you got your ruler switched on, just head on up here to view and go show rulers or command R and show guides and command semicolon. So make sure those are switched on. So with them switched on, you're gonna just simply click and drag a guide out. It's mine's gonna to snap to the top of the circle and to the bottom of the circle. And I also want one in the center of that circle. Likewise for the center going horizontally, vertically. And let's do the second one over here, vertically into the center of that one. And to make sure they snap just make sure that this little tool is switching over here which is snapping you can go in here if it's still not snapping and say snap to guides and also have snap to object bounds and including bounding box midpoints just make sure those are all switched on let's start sorting out the spacing of these by drawing a box a nice square box from here to here so i'm going to push m or you can head on over here to this tool which is your rectangle tool make sure that's selected just head over back to your swatches and make sure you don't have a stroke so i've got a stroke on there at the moment so i'm going to make sure i've got no stroke there and the fill color i'm actually going to change this down to let's just make it blue for now so we can see exactly because if it's white obviously we can't see it against our white art board over here so if I just zoom in 
And now I'm going to start drawing the square. So you can see where I hover over these points over here, it really starts snapping to all these guide points over here. So you can see how my little dot there is snapping to that midpoint. So with the midpoint in selection, I'm going to start dragging. I'm going to hold shift to make it a nice square. And I'm just going to make a snap to that guide over there. So it's made a perfect square. Now what I want to do is just get the guide again. So I'm just pushing V to get my move tool. Okay, move tool up here. And I'm going to drop another guide to there. I'm going to select this box over here that we've just created. Hold down Alt, click and drag. Okay, just gonna drop it over there and then just move it up and it snaps to that line. So we've basically got two squares now and that's what I'm looking for. And I'm just gonna drag a guide vertically to the center of this and another guide to the bottom of the square over here. Now what we need to do is actually send these two squares to the background. So I'm going to have both of them selected. So I'm just going to hold shift and select this top square. And I'm going to send them to the back by going command shift and open bracket. Or you can just head up here to layer and go to arrange and go move to back. So move to the back and make sure that those move all the way to the back. Another thing we have to do is lock these guides. So we're going to head back up to view and go lock guides. This is so that we can't select them and move them around. With your moves tool still selected, I'm going to select these dots and I'm going to hold down alt and click and drag in this direction over here. I'm just going to drop it over there and then zoom in over here. So what we want to basically do is move these dots so that they basically snap to the center of that dot. And I also want it centered vertically. So I'm just going to move it a little bit off to the side and I'm going to drop it over there. I'm just going to zoom out a bit. You basically want it sitting perfectly in that guide over there. Okay. Then what I'm going to do with this line still selected, I'm going to hold down shift and I'm going to select our top row of dots. I'm going to hold down alt and I'm right over here where this guide basically intercepts this dot over here. I'm going to hold down alt click and I'm going to drag it all the way down to this guide over here. And you can see where I'm positioning it. I'm positioning it right where that guide intersects the circle over there. So I'm just going to drop it perfectly over there. Now I'm just going to zoom out for this so you can see exactly what I'm going to be doing. I'm now going to hold down command J and I'm just going to hold it down. I'm not going to keep on tapping and I'm just holding it down and it gives us a whole duplication of our dots. So if I zoom in on this again, just holding spacebar and command, you can see it's given us that pattern of that half tone pattern. And that's what we're looking for. Just quickly, I'm going to zoom right in here. I'm going to select that, delete it, select that and delete it. And I'm also going to hide our guides now. So I'm just going to go show guides and click that off. So our guides have now disappeared. The next thing to do is looking at the width of the circle sizes of these dots. So this is going to be your fade out point and working towards the bottom is going to be your part where it becomes more dense. So I'm going to look at this as my fade out point and this is going to be my really dense area. So to thicken out these lines, it's really easy. All I'm going to do is select this line over here and I'm going to up this stroke width over here just to 0.2. So I'm going to go 0.2 and it gives us that little line around it. So for every single one of these, I'm just going to increase it by 0.2. So this one's going to become 0.4. This one's going to be 0.6. Let's just have 0.6. This one's going to be 0.8. This one's going to be 1. So this is going to be 1. So you can see what I'm doing. I'm just increasing the stroke width of all of these as I go up. So this one's going to be 1.2. This is going to be 1.4. Scrolling up. This one's going to be 1.6. This is going to be 1.8 and this one here is going to be 2. Okay, so let's just zoom out a little bit here so you can actually see. So you see we're starting to create that cool half tone effect of this is you're going to be your fader point and this is going to be your denser point over here. Now the problem what we're going to have is soon you can just see, hopefully you can see it on your screen, is that you start to get this little circle develop on the inside of here. So that's 2 point, this is going to be 2.2 and you're really going to start seeing it here. So you can see it starts giving us this little white area over here. But nevertheless, we're just going to carry on adding the stroke. So I'm going to click on the next one. This is 2.2. And now we're going to go 2.4, 2.6, 2.8. And we're going to carry on until these dots basically start touching one another. Okay, so I've stopped on 5.2 and I'm just going to zoom out. So I'm going to go command zero and just get to see where we are. So you can see I well overdid our lines over there. So I'm just going to go over there and delete those. 
Okay, and zoom back into our line over here. With these little problematic circles over here, I'm just gonna select all of those lines. So just gonna make a mark where the, okay, so that line there, I'm just gonna take that stroke off so you can see. So now basically you can see that line there is absolutely fine, is it? Make sure, yep, that, well, in actual fact, it's one up. So I'm gonna take that line, put it up there. So from this line here, all the way down to the bottom, I just wanna select all those dots. So I'm just gonna zoom right out, get my marquee tool, and I am now going to drag a marquee or a my move tool over a selection of all those dots over there. Okay, it's gonna zoom in again and to make sure I've got them. So I've got all those dots there that I wanna start correcting now. So all I'm gonna do is I am going to go up to layer and I'm going to go expand stroke. So it's basically expand all those strokes. It may take a little bit of time and there we go. Now what I'm gonna do is head on up here where it says divide, I'm gonna click on divide. Once that's done, I'm just gonna head over here to this option of here where it says add, I'm gonna click add. This is the part I was trying to warn you about earlier. So push that add button and uh, go grab a sandwich. So once it finishes this function over here and you can see it's given us this union or unite function over here where it's given all these and it's added these shapes together, we can add all the shapes together of this top half over here so this section over here where I just put this little line I'm just gonna move that, move that to the side so I know which lines to select now you can either zoom out or just select these while holding shift e on each row I'm just gonna do the while holding shift and selecting each row so you can do the exact same thing with this selection over here I'm gonna head on up to layer and I'm gonna go down to expand stroke click on that it's gonna expand the stroke and then click on this add button again you push that add button again it's time for a copy and when that's all finished, adding all those items together, you are going to then select these three groups. So three groups as in this one in the bottom here, the one we did first, this one over here, and this one over here, it didn't expand at the same time because it basically didn't have a stroke on it. So that's why we're gonna select those. And we now we're gonna add these ones all together. And now we have one big element. All I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna click off here, I'm gonna zoom into this area over here and click on our half tone dots. And I'm just gonna go Command X, so I'm just basically cutting the dots out. And you can see we left over with all these leftover dots that didn't unite or add together when we hit that button up there. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna go Command A to select everything and I'm just gonna hit delete to delete all of those dots and then come on V and then we just left with our half tone dots. That's how to create the half tone effect in Affinity Designer. Now because you've made them one object, just one simple click can just change the colors. So you can just click, 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 click. Hmm. So my question to you today is, are you a new user to Affinity Designer or have you been doing this for quite a while? Let me know in the comments below. And that brings us to the end of another episode. Make sure to follow us on our social channels, smash that like button, subscribe if you haven't and I'll see you on the next one. I'm out of here.